Welcome back to the YouTube channel today. We're going to be talking about Gary O'Neill and Wolverhampton Runderers. I personally think that he has to be sacked, but we're going to discuss kind of what's gone on at Wall so far this season, kind of discuss everything that's going on with them as a club. But before we get into it, please do smash the like button and please do subscribe. Now, where to start? I just saw a stat, literally, just before I came to record this video, that this is the first time Wolverhampton Wanderers have lost their four opening home games of any season in history. This is, we're talking any standard of football, and I think that is a really, really damning stat. I think it kind of just really highlights the position that Wolverhampton Wanderers are in currently. And we'll kind of go through, because I know there's kind of, there's a lot of layers to this, and there's kind of a bit of context you've got to apply to it. Because I know, for starters, I know Opta went out and put out a statement saying that this is officially the worst ever and the most difficult ever start to a season a Premier League side has ever had. Now, as a whole, yes, I understand that's gone on, but I think we've got to talk about the actual like the actual performances. They've conceded now 23 goals in their first eight games, which is absolutely horrific. And the fact that, that people are happy with this and the fact that Wolves fans are happy with this kind of really blows my mind. I understand they've played the likes of Liverpool, they've played the likes of Chelsea, they've played Manchester City. Yes, I understand that. But they've also played Nottingham Forest. They haven't just... I get they've played some big boys, but in the games where they really should be getting a result, they just simply got a draw. And that's it. They currently find themselves bottom of the table with only one point. And I think looking at them as, as well, performance-wise, I don't see anything. I can't really understand what Gary O'Neill's trying to do. So we talk about this quite often. And you kind of talk about identities with football clubs. What is their identity? What are they trying to do? And I, I watch them week in, week out. I'm a West Bromwich Albion fan. A lot of my friends are Wolves fans. I was sat with some Wolves fans watching the game against Manchester City at the pub this weekend on Sunday. And I was watching it. And don't get me wrong, it was an okay performance. I saw what they were trying to do. But still, they couldn't get the result. And I kind of look at it and people can talk about the performance and say it's a decent performance, but they still got nothing out of the game. And this keeps on happening. But at least with the, the previous weeks, they weren't performing well, which is I think is worrying. Because when people go on about the fact that Oh, at least you're losing playing well. They're not been playing well. Kind of, you can take this Manchester City game and kind of put it out of context and just talk about this game specifically. If they were playing like that every week in, week out, then I don't think it would be a problem. But that's the first time we've really seen a good performance from Wolves and maybe even 40 minutes against Chelsea in that first half when they, I think the score was equal at that time. But I just look at it as a whole and I just think, what on earth is going on? And I think we can talk about Gary O'Neill as a manager. Now, I know a lot of people like to joke about him being a PE teacher and everything like that. And that's lazy analysis. We can talk about him as an actual manager. And I think he's a manager and he's a, he's a very decent manager at that. But I think what my problem is, is I think he's a fixer. So when he came in at Bournemouth, he came in after Scott Parker. It was just after the loss to Liverpool. I think it was 8 or 9 nil. He came in, did a job, kept them up. And then they got sacked and everyone was like, what on earth's going on? But I've got a good friend who's a Bournemouth fan. He talks about the performances and things like that. And they would, they, he did enough to stay up. But if the club want to progress, they had to get rid of him. And then they got in Iriola in the first seven or eight games. They got off to an absolutely dreadful start at Bournemouth. But then look at them now. Look where they are now. They've got an identity. They're playing some really good football. And it kind of makes you look at what Gary O'Neill did. And you kind of respect him for what he did. He kept the club up. But now you can see how much further he took that squad, Iriola. And now you look at the Wolves, he came in at a time when they weren't doing well. It was kind of just literally, they, they, they hadn't got great momentum under Lopetegui towards the end of the season. And then Lopetegui literally left pretty much on the last day, I think it was, or just before the end of the transfer window, right before the season started. He came in and fixed the club, did a good job. But I think that's what he does. I think he's a manager who you bring in. And I'm not saying he's like a Sam Allardyce in that sense. And I'm not talking about actual playing styles or anything like that. But as a manager... People talk about Sam Allardyce and managers like Tony Pierce. They come in and fix broken squads. They fix them and get them to a certain point. But he, they can't progress them. And I look at Gary O'Neill and that's the way I see him as a manager. Now, I think he's a manager that you get in to fix a problem. And he can take it only so far, but he can't progress any further than that. So I think if Wolves want to really go on further, because don't get me wrong, they've got some very decent footballers in that squad. And I look at it and just think... It's a really difficult one. Yes, I know they've had some injuries as well to the, the, uh, the defenders. They've lost some big players in Pedro Neto and uh, Kilman, the captain. But you kind of look at it as a whole and you think they've got Semedo, they've got um, Nuri on either side. Why aren't they playing three at the back? Bombing on forward. And then you look at players like Andre, I think has been absolutely incredible. I think Lamine is a really good player. I think Jao Gomez is. Stran Larson is showing moments. So I think you look at the team. I don't think it's an horrific team. I think it's really significantly underperforming. And I think that's a kind of a really worrying sign. I think a lot of people aren't talking about that enough like you look at some of the players even Forbes who keeps coming on off the bench I think he's an exciting player like I look at it as a whole and I don't think when you compare it like for like with some of the teams they're competing with towards the bottom of the table it's better than Ipswich's it's better than Southampton really it's better than Leicester's in my opinion they should not be in and around there and arguably 
right now you could argue it's better than Crystal Palace with the way that the squad is currently because Crystal Palace lost some of their big boys in Elise. Um, I look at it as a whole and I just really worry for Wolves in the sense of I'm putting my bias aside as a West Brom fan here. I'm talking about them objectively. I worry for them with the way they're going and the fact that he's still been, he's still there and a lot of people are saying he's got three more games to improve it. My worry for the Wolves is, and we kind of, you look at these kind of performances that they've had so far at the start of this season, we talk about where they are at now currently as a club and we look at the whole situation, step back and say, if we put aside the, the, the size they've played because let's just remove that kind of context and you look at the performances as a whole on their own, they've not been good enough. So why wait Give him more time to lose more games. Got Brighton this week. And then after that, supposedly then, this is when kind of they're going to go and grow and they're going to kind of really go on forward and like smash the league because then their run gets a lot easier because they won't be playing any of the big six. But what will they do in four weeks' time if performances are staying the exact same as they are now and they've played the teams that they should have beaten and they're still down there at the bottom? What do they do then? I look at this as now and think kind of, you look at it as a whole... He's had long enough. He really, the momentum was really poor to end, towards the end of last season. Their record at home is absolutely horrific. Genuinely horrific. They've literally, if you go back and look at their results at home this season, it is absolutely, sorry, this year, this calendar year, it's dreadful. They don't win enough games and it's been going on now for a real long time because you think about it, there was a time where a lot of Wolves fans were talking about Europa League finish last season and then they kind of just, just about stayed up. And I think this year now, you can kind of look at it on a graph of the trajectory trajectory uh, you're looking and it's just been going downwards constantly and something needs to change you can't keep talking about oh it's all right the future will come the future will come we're too good to, to go down lots of clubs have done this and have had problems with this you've seen West Brom do it you've seen Stoke do it you've seen Sunderland do it there are so many teams that have done this sides that were in the Premier League for a while kind of said oh no our squad's good enough we can kind of stick with this manager and we'll kind of real like we'll, we'll tough out kind of thing and then it's too late something needs to be done now I think Wolverhampton Wanderers need to get a manager in ASAP I think it needs to be done now, to be honest, going into this, because then a manager can come in and then you get the new manager bounce against the size that they should be. But why wait? Because if it's too, if it, if it carries on three weeks time and we're still doing this video, we still come back to this video and they're in the same position, then it's too late. Wolves are relegated. I think they're blessed right now that this is the first ever Premier, sorry, top flight history, in flop, top flight history, that four teams have not won a game after eight games. It's the first time ever. They are blessed with the fact that Crystal Palace um, Crystal Palace, um, uh, Ipswich, Southampton are all doing as bad as they are. They're kind of blessed that they can look at those three. Wolves can surely and think, OK, we need, if we sack our manager now, we can get ahead of these three. That's what they should be doing and get the new manager bounce in time for the easier run. And don't leave it too late. I personally think you should be sacked. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I look at it as a whole, as a situation, and I can't get my head around how he's still in the job. And that everyone's saying he's got three three games to, to like to save his managerial career. Why don't you look back at the previous year? What why give him three games? Look at the last 33 games. Look at that record. It's absolutely dreadful. And I just really worry for the walls. And I think we've seen so many teams do this where it's kind of not naivety, it's not arrogance, it's confidence in the side. But I don't know why they'd be confident in the side when they look at recent performances in the last year. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Please let me know. Who do you think is Wolverhampton Wanderers' his best player? I'll probably go Andre so far this season. I really, really like him in the midfield. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you tomorrow for another upload. Do you think they'll stay up in the league? Do you think they'll be relegated? And should they sack Gary O'Neill? I think yes, but let me know. Thank you guys. Smash the like button and please subscribe. See ya. Bye.